Friends, we not only serve a mighty and a powerful God, we serve a loving and merciful God. To God be the honor, the praise, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Precious brothers and sisters, I want to come on here. It's been a very long day for Pastor Day, but I pray in the name of Jesus that God will use me, continue to use me. And I'm so honored that he has chosen me to go out and to help those that are hurting, those that are backslidden, those that are in need. He loves all of us so much. I was on a live stream the other evening and I wanted to do a teaching on the book of Luke, the prodigal son. And uh, that's what we're going to do. It's a short teaching for all of you. I can't tell you how many times brothers and sisters have come to me and asked, will I go into the rapture? They're afraid they weren't worthy to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. For they had backslidden in their past and they had sinned and they are very worried we're living in the last moments the last hours of the end times the clock is ticking it's about to strike the midnight hour and the cry is about to come out anytime anytime there's no trigger point for the rapture of the church it can happen in the blink of an eye it can happen in the next second just like that back fast that trumpet could sound, and so many are wondering, will I make it in the rapture? We serve a loving God and a merciful God. I want to take you now to the book of Luke, the prodigal son, Luke chapter 15. In this teaching, I'll be reading from the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 11 through 32. The King James Version Bible. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have a bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, The father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and the shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this is my son, 
was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his eldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, My brother is come, and, they, and my father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this. My brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and was found. Now, oftentimes today, brothers and sisters who love Jesus with all of their heart, I'll reflect back on a time when uh, they were backslidden and they turned from their faith and uh, they sinned and had to come back to their first love. And uh, we know we're going to all be held accountable for everything in our life. And they fear, and we are not to have a spirit of fear, they fear that uh, because at a point in their life, they were a sinner. They were backslidden. So they're not going to be worthy to go in the rapture. When we look at Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son. Now the one son never, never left the father. He was always there and keeping the commandments. And it kind of reminds me, back in the time that Jesus walked the earth, the Pharisees. Now they were in their temples and they were worshiping God and reading from the Torah and they were a, a tight-knit group. They were a band of the brothers joined together, giving God the glory. They were burning incense at the altar and uh, sacrificing animals unto God. They never really ventured out away. They never strayed out to where the sin is. But they couldn't understand Jesus. They just couldn't understand Jesus. Like the one son, they were loyal to the father. They never left the father's side. They never strayed. They were in their own heart they were never backslidden because they stayed in the temple where there was food, where there was fellowship. And dare I say, brothers and sisters, we see that today in the many brothers and sisters. We'll look at those who attend that church building on a regular basis. And they're a tight-knit group and they're a band of brothers and sisters worshiping God, loving Jesus. But it seems like they never go out. They never go out to where the lost are to minister unto them. And there has been a time, I'm certain, in their life, but they were a sinner, but they were lost. And now they're found. Maybe they were backslidden, and now they're found. So I want to let you know that if at any point you were like the one son that uh, ventured away and uh, the Lord had blessed you, 
with material things of this world and you squandered it all and you went and you sinned against God. But once you came back to your first love and you got down on your knees and you repented, I want you to know that all is forgiven. But when that trumpet sounds, there's going to be a great feast. There's going to be music and there's going to be dancing and you will be there. You will be there with the Father. I love you all. In closing, I just want to give you a few updates. Um, I want to thank Linda, precious sister Linda. Uh, Gerald, the homeless gentleman in Flint, Michigan, uh, she gave an offering of $100, and we've made sure now, my wife and I, that Gerald is taken care of and has shelter. And uh, my dear friend that I have been reunited uh, with, re reacquainted with, uh, he is now Reverend Allen. I just found out uh, from his wife he's going in for major brain surgery on Tuesday, and we'll do a prayer video on Tuesday, but please uh, keep him lifted up in prayer. Prayer warriors are needed to pray for Alan. It's going to be a five-hour surgery, I believe, so please lift him up in prayer for healing. I love you all, and uh, I'll be out in uh, Flint, Michigan tomorrow, and pray for the homeless, pray for the poor, and uh, if you feel it in your heart, and the Holy Spirit uh, just moves upon you, to support this ministry and outreach to the homeless. I'll put the links below to how you can support our ministry. God bless you. I love you very much. Mm -hmm.